Today I'm going to teach you how to make your UI follow certain game objects inside your game. So let's say you, for example, have a player inside your game and you want a health bar to be on top of the player the entire time as he's moving around, it's going to follow him. You know, then we're going to learn how to do that in this episode here. I do also want to point out that even though I'm sitting in a 2D project, this is also going to work for 3D and I will actually show you how to make your UI face the camera the entire time because that is going to be very necessary inside a 3D project. In order to demonstrate this, I'm just going to continue off a project we've been working on for a couple of videos, which is basically just having a health bar that is inside the corner of the screen. And then I have a player that can just like sort of move around. So as you can see, you know, I can move around, but the health bar is just kind of sitting up there and you can take them so you can heal up again, uh, but it's not really following my player. So that's what we're going to fix in this video here. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I have my canvas selected, which is up here inside my hierarchy. Then I want to go inside my canvas go into render mode and change this one to world space. Basically what we did here is we turned the canvas into a world space type game object, which means that now we can actually start moving it inside our scene as we would with any other kind of game object. So what I can do now is I can actually take my canvas and let's actually go ahead and go into our scene mode. And I'm going to take the canvas and just kind of like scale it down from the center here, just so we, just so it fits the, the health bar that we have in here or whatever UI that you might have created inside your game. And I'm just going to go ahead and take all the UI elements inside my canvas. And I'm going to make sure that I center them by going inside the inspector and clicking the uh, anchor presets up here, holding down alt, clicking the center. And then you can see it's centered inside my canvas. Now I do also make sure to actually rearrange this again. So I do want to have it over here, just kind of sit right there so we can actually see what is going on. I'm just going to take my canvas again and make sure to resize it so it fits my my UI in here. You don't really need to be that exact about this, just kind of like fit it down so it's not like huge and everything. So after doing this, the next thing would actually be to take the canvas and move it on top of my player. But just to kind of show you something here, if we were to double click my player, you can actually see that inside my transform, and this is very important to point out because some people do this, you can see that my scaling for the player is set to one, one and a half and one, which means that, you know, I increase the height of it. If it is like this and you start changing the UI and making it fit onto the player, then the UI is going to get scaled as well. So we want to make sure that this is one, one and one, which is really how it should be when you make a game in here. You know, when you have a sprite attached to your player, then it should be one, one, one either way. But just to make sure that if you run into this error here where it kind of like scales out of proportion, this is how you fix that. So with this done, I can now take my canvas and move it on top of my player, which means that now the canvas is a child element of my player. So if I were to go ahead and zoom out here and reset the position of the canvas. So inside my inspector, I'm going to say zero and zero. You can see that now it's on top of my player right here, but it's kind of big. So we want to make sure we scale it down as well. So inside scaling, I'm going to say 0 0.05. Actually, it's going to be 0 0.05. 0 0.005 it's going to be. I'm going to copy it, paste it in in Y and in set axis. Then I'm going to go ahead and zoom back into my player. And then you can see we actually have it in here sitting right on top of the player. So I can now take the canvas and just kind of move the position up so it fits somewhere just about where I want it to be inside my, my game here, which means that now if we were to actually play the game, we don't really need to do anything else for this to actually follow the player. We can take damage, we can heal up again. Uh, and it's actually kind of working when it comes to a 2D game. However, if you're working on a 3D game, then you want to make sure you always make the UI face the camera as well. So if I were to go inside 3D mode, you can actually see that if I move around, it is going to start warping and it's not going to look right. And you want to make sure there's a script attached to this canvas that makes sure that it always rotates towards the camera. So what I've done is I've essentially created this little script here that I've called look at object, which allow for us to create a script that makes sure that the game object it's attached to is always going to look towards a certain game object inside our game. So for example, here in this case, it would actually be the UI always facing the camera. So I can just take this script, apply it to my UI, which is the canvas in this case here, drag in my camera to tell it to look at the camera, and then it's just going to face the camera at all times. So this simple script here would just basically go in and say we want to serialize a game object, which is just going to be named 
object in this case here. And then we just take the object and put it inside our update method. And currently we're telling it to rotate towards the game object that we passed in. But actually we took the transform.position minus the transform position of the game object because if we don't do that, it's actually going to be mirrored. So it's important that we do that inside our look rotation method down here. So once you create that script, you go into your Unity project, you then just take the script, which is down here, and you pass it onto whatever game object you want to be facing the camera, which in this case is going to be the canvas. So I put it onto my canvas, and then I drag in whatever game object I wanted to look at. So we do actually have a space inside our inspector here. So I'm gonna take the camera, pass it in, and that's basically all we need in order for this to be working. So if I were to go ahead and take my game view, move it over here just so we can see what is going on, press play. You can actually see that in 3D mode, uh, when I start moving my game object around, it is actually going to be rotating the UI towards the camera. And currently inside this 2D game, it's gonna look a bit weird inside our game view, but in a 3D game, this is actually going to be working quite nice. So with this simple tutorial here, you should now have learned how to make your UI actually follow game objects and also how to make certain UI follow the, the camera position inside your game. So you can actually have the UI facing the camera all the time. So with that, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.